all, and welcome to this week's mini lecture on research methods uh, discussing chapter two in our book, Infancy Development from Birth to Age Three. Our learning objectives for this week are to describe steps that infant researchers can take to ensure that their studies are ethical, as well as accessible, diverse, equitable, and inclusive to discuss the unique issues that make research with infants distinctive and challenging, and finally to explain the options and trade-offs researchers consider when they make decisions about research settings, designs, and measures. A general overview of this week, we will be going over issues in research with infants, research settings, research designs, research designs for studying development, and finally research measures. So to begin, we are discussing issues in research with infants, ethical concerns. Um, infants cannot make or cannot consent. They cannot make a decision about participating in research. So researchers rely on parents to give their informed consent. Um, to this, I ask, what sorts of issues should researchers be sensitive to when studying behavior and development in infants from a cultural or social context other than their own? Just pause and ponder on that question before we move on. Another issue when researching with infants also includes behavioral state. Infants are most likely to be able to complete a research task when they are awake or in alert state. Um, even when experimental sessions are short, approximately half of all infant participants on average will not complete the experiment, often due to fuzziness. Um, so when you are researching infants, you're heavily dependent on the child, on its temperament, on its schedule. Um, the research does not involve, evolve around, the research evol involves around, evolves around, oh my gosh, I cannot English, it evolves around the infant. And finally, the third issue we will be discussing is inference and interpretation. Um, it is hard to understand or know what infants and toddlers are thinking. So we use inference interpretation instead. We look at heart rates, cortisol levels, brain activity, uh, levels of sucking, walking, reaching, crawling, eye movement. Uh, infants cannot respond verbally to questions about what they perceive, think, or feel. So as I mentioned before, re researchers rely on other measure measures <laughs> which require inference and interpretation, um, such as all of these listed here. Moving on to research settings, there are two main research settings um, that research with infants will take place in. The first is naturalistic studies or settings, and the other is laboratory studies or settings. So naturalistic studies, it's in the child's usual surroundings, home, school, um, where the child is comfortable. comfortable. Um, there are different types of naturalistic studies. There's naturalistic observation, which is passive observation, where the researcher is kind of just like a fly on the wall, watching the child to do its thing. Uh, ethnographic research, it's where researchers make observations or conduct interviews in a culture other than their own. Uh, and then operational definitions, it's clear, concrete, verbal descriptions, of target behaviors that help researchers avoid observer bias. Um, with naturalistic studies, the external valid validity tends to be high. In laboratory studies, it's a specially designed research space that isolates the influence of selected independent variables on dependent variables. Uh, so the internal validity of laboratory studies tends to be high because of this. There are three main research designs um, that we're going to be discussing on this page. Um, there are case studies, quasi-experimental studies, and experimental studies. Uh, case studies are in single subject research. So it's in-depth examination of a single child. Uh, possibly using experimental methods. So for example, one-on-one uh, -on -one interventions with children with autism spectrum disorders. Uh, Quasi-experimental studies or groups of participants are already formed before the study begins. So for example, infants born preterm or in a multiple birth 
be that twins or triplets. And then experimental studies are random assignment is used to form different groups. So for example, infants who are randomly assigned to play with familiar toys compared with infants who are randomly assigned to interact with unfamiliar toys. So with these three different research designs, I invite you to ponder the question of which design would you choose for your research and why, or for any future research and why? Now there's research designs for studying development. There's longitudinal, cross-sectional, cross and microgenetic. Uh, longitudinal reveals continuity and change within the same individuals over a long period of time. Um, that movie, I believe it's called Boyhood, where they follow um, little boys through adolescence and adulthood um, would be an example of longitudinal, at least, observations. Um, Another example would be the development of infants' interactions with books and their reading ability to first rate. Uh, Cross-sectional compares different age groups at the same point in time. So an example of this would be the ability of 12, 18, and 24-month-olds to imitate other, another person's actions. And then there is microgenetic research, which documents the process of development over a relatively short period of time. So for example, the development of self-feeding over a period of weeks and months. Now, well, finally, we have research measures. There's behavioral responses and parental report. So behavioral rep responses are naturally occurring or conditioned behaviors. Uh, psychophysiological, oh my gosh, that is a word. Um, it is heart rate, cortisol level, brain activity, uh, visual behavior. So they're fixating their eyes on something or they prefer to look at something longer than something else. Um, and conditioned behavior. So sucking, uh, head turning. These are all behavioral responses in which we measure in our research. And then there's also parental report. Uh, which potentially useful information, but we also have to be mindful of biases. Um, these include diaries, checklists, rating scales, questionnaires that parents fill out about their own children. That is all for this week. Thank you so much for uh, watching this mini lecture. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just want to chat, um, please email me. Um, I am here to support you. And I'm, like I said, that is all for today.